Hey everybody and um welcome to my <laughs> new let's play I guess. It's like uh, not really a new one since I've been playing Katawa Shoujo, but this time I'm gonna be looking for the bad endings. So yeah. I think I've made no friends so far. I'm not hanging out with anybody. And it's the day of the festival, so... Let's see. From my window, I could already see people at the soba booth clinging noodles onto plates for people with craving low-quality food. I throw back a handful of my morning meds and ponder how I should spend the day. There will be a few exams in the coming week, but I don't consider those as ominous as others. So I'm not worried about them as pos as I probably should be. With no urgent obligation regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. Finishing my morning routine, I exit into the hallway, intending to go out and find something to eat. Passing by his doors, I decide to see what Kenji's up to today out of impulse. I'm curious if he has any plans since everyone is doing something. Then again, I can picture having built a soundproof shelter in his room. Possibly something like a fort, complete with a no girls allowed sign. Although with the girls crossed out and body crudely, crudely scrawled underneath it. Knocking on this door, which is luckily devoid of any kind of sign, I hear again the unsettling clicking of set at least ten locks before being pulled. The door opens up. It's okay. Who is it? You're supposed to ask that before you open the door. Oh, it's you. Damn, it's early. Not really that early. What? The, what is it, man? Nothing. Just want to ask you if you're gonna go. Gonna what you're gonna do today? Half the school is already there. Or there already. Out uh, where? Why? Huh? What? Wait, what? Is today special? Why are they there? Who are? I can hear them. It's loud. Don't tell me. Has the invasion begun? He suddenly looks more alarmed. What day is it, man? Yeah, I guess you can't see from the wooden boots outside the people selling stuff. What the hell are you talking about? I have my curtains closed all the time to thwart the snipers. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, it's a festival. You know that, right? Oh shit, that's the day? Aw oh, damn, aw oh, damn it, damn it! I can't believe I forgot. I don't have my fort finished yet. This is bad. This is going to be very bad. It's good. You told me this, man. This is good. This is going to be a bad day. Por qué? Oh man. They're going to be everywhere. The people outside their window. Socializing. Kenji rubs his temples nervously, suddenly looking very ill. It's going to be loud as hell. Damn. I was going to go out today. But now it's ruined everything. Everything is ruined. This is awful. This sucks. It sucks. What the hell? This really sucks. I can't go anywhere now. There's nowhere to run. Kenji seems nervous. You could even say he's majorly figured out. I can't believe this. So that day was today. That was today. So that's what today was. I know I've read this already, but bear with me, guys. Damn, I couldn't even prepare for it. I couldn't even brace myself, and now it's here, and I can't do anything. You should have told me this earlier, dude. I mean, at least I know, but I could have known earlier. Imagine what I could have accomplished. Sorry. I thought you knew. So I guess you're not doing anything today. The weather is even good. Yesterday was really windy, so I thought today was going to be cold. It's not, though. So there's no reason to stay inside. Yeah, you should check out the festival. Kenji groans and covers his face with his hands. No, no, I can't do it. They'll eat me alive out there. I know it. This has to be a joke, but he said it with such a straight face relatively straight what are you going to do 
We should hang out in here. You could help me build my fort. <laughs> we might still make it if we work together. Am I going to do? I don't have any plans in hindsight. That's really stupid. Maybe I should have asked a girl out. Then again, all things considered, I don't have I I don't think I could have done anything like that. It's only my first week. A week that I have wasted being awkward around almost everyone. Stumbling all around myself trying to get the hang of this place. Thinking about it, what have I accomplished? Who would have I had asked, even asked? <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Damn, it seems that Kenji is the only realistic option for a date today. This is the most embarrassing thing that I to have in me since I had a heart attack. Because a girl confessed her love to me. Can't be helped. I don't know, really. I don't have anything, I guess. A fort seems a bit excessive. You sure you don't want to go outside? It's not like visitors won't come into the dorms today. He looks thunderstruck by this revelation. Damn, you may have a point. This place is not safe today. We must find somewhere to hide in. He falls silent for a moment, thinking. The roof. What about it? We are going to hide out on the roof for today. It's a perfect place. Nobody even goes up there. Meet me there in one hour. I have to prepare. He slams the door shut and locks and the locks click closed. Damn, what the hell is wrong with Kenji? And to think I'm going along with his craziness, it really makes me depressed. I feel like a failure. <laughs> Once I step outside, the den of the crowd greets me. The whole school is bustling with activity. There are stalls everywhere, and the crowd swarming between them is considerable. I didn't expect the festival would attract so many visitors. I have to admit that the people in charge of decorating the place put a lot of effort into it, and it really shows. People seem to be enjoying themselves, and the atmosphere is colorful, bright, and happy. That is, if I weren't settling in such a foul mood. At the moment, it's annoying than anything else. It's more annoying than anything else. Well, it can't be helped. I decide to stick out my original plan and eat. Then I guess I have to at least see what Kenji's up to on the roof. Uh. I do a slow circle around the grounds to kill some time. Looking at the stalls, but not feeling like playing any of the games anymore. The garish color grind my eyes and I feel more and more ill by the minute. I can't even decide what if I want to eat what I want to eat. And the light selecting combined with the masses of energetic festivals isn't helping. Visitors isn't helping. I just head towards the nearest stall and seem to it seems to offer something halfway edible and get in line. It turns out to be noodles. It also turns out to be not very good. Well, at least it's nourishment. It's not like I demand anything else at this point. As I stare my dis disagreeable noodle what? Disagreeable noodles. I idly wonder what I idly wonder what the others are doing right now. Shizu and Misha are definitely somewhere organizing things. I better steer clear from them. I guess they wouldn't they wouldn't forgive me so easily for leaving them alone with this thing. I expect Emmy to be buzzing all over the place, being depressingly cheerful. There's no chance to find her, but no chance to avoid her either, so it doesn't matter. Lily will probably be helping with helping her class with the festival event, and entirely too busy for any, any for another's company. Hanako wouldn't want to talk to anyone anyway. Either keeping to herself or helping Lily. Rin should be tending to her mural and is probably being help unhelpful to any hypothetical interest parties. Hypothetically interest parties. Going there for some peace and quiet seems like the nicest option of the above. But then again, I can't see having art focused on me raise my mood either, so I'll pass. While I was lost in thought, my food seems to have disappeared, and so has my hunger. I guess I just blocked out the experience of eating, which should be a good thing. 
<coughs> what does it say? Sat satisfied and unsatisfied. I turn to walk towards the main school building. An hour has almost passed already. The crowd is even thicker in here than it was outside. The hallways are almost unbearable, and I don't even dare to think what's it like inside the classrooms. I head up the stairs to my destination. The roof. Thankfully, the door at the top isn't locked, but now there's a hand written sight on it. Off limits. <laughs> don't mind if I don't. Uh, the festival, the festival noise is surprisingly muted up here, and the festival and the rooftop looks deserted as expected. Near a place where the cyclone fence has collapsed, there is a pile of blankets that seems oddly out of place. Wait, did the pile just move a little? That would be strange, as there is no wind at, at all. I carefully stick my hand out to give an expensive prod. Experimental prod. Ah! You both yell. Startled, I jump back. Who is it? God damn it, Kenji, it's me. Oh damn, you scared me, man. So what are you? So what are we doing up here? We're having a picnic. Huh? Yeah, I have a blanket, pretzels, and whiskey. It's the ultimate setup, man. Whiskey. Aren't you a little bit too young to drink alcohol? I'm 20, you know. You're not. I am, and so are you. What? That's absurd. Hey, at least you get something out of it. All I get is this bottle of whiskey. He's rambling incoherently, but I decide to play along. So why do we have a bottle of whiskey? My mom couldn't come to visit for the festival, so she sent me some expensive single malt instead. A likely story. Want some? Um, it's not like I have anything to lose. This day can't possibly get worse. Why not? We sit down on a pile of blankets. Kenji apparently dragged up here. He he produces an amount of what? An almost full bottle of whiskey and passes it to me. You didn't even bring glasses? No. This is not some romantic priceless princess picnic. What the hell, man? This is a manly picnic. <laughs> okay. No glasses. No napkins. <laughs> whiskey only. The beverage of true men. <laughs> Whatever. This is so stupid. Oh, look at This house says whatever, too. And pretzels. I take a closer look at the bottle. Twelve years old single malt whiskey, as he said. Shrugging my shoulders, I take a swig. It burns my throat like acid, but it tastes isn't unpleasant. I feel it going straight into my head, and the afterwards linger in the back of my mouth. Craving for another swig. We should outlight our counter offense and trash talk women here. Where they can't hear us. Damn, I forgot to bring my graphs. I decide to play the play a drinking game of myself. Every time Kenji mentions female conspiracy, I'll take a swig. <laughs> That's a good drinking game. Four or five hours. Four or five hours, approximately several days later, I lost track. You shouldn't feel bad, man. Ease the fuck up. Seriously. Seriously. I am relaxed. God damn it. I'm telling it as it is, as I see it. Think about it. When did housing and land start becoming more and more expensive? When women began entering the world before, when the workforce. Because it created two income nuclear families. Yeah. I forgot my graphs, but... And you'll just have to take my word for it. Women are connected to the decay of all society. I see. That is a kind of hard to believe. That is kind of hard to believe. Even if I say that somehow, everything Candy Sam seems to make sense now. <laughs> it all fits together, but I don't know if it's because he can explain things more clearly when drunk, or because I understand everything better when drunk. 
No, man, think, think. Think of the deeper implications. People could afford to stay saying, oh, well, since two members of the family are now earning money as opposed to one, they could surely afford something like raising cost of ownership. I see your point, but land in Japan has always been expensive. And the price of land, of land generally goes up with the when a country starts undergoing industrialization. But no, it's because of women. Correlation equals what? Cautions? You know. I thought correlation th didn't equal cautions. Well, whatever. Maybe you're right. I'm always right. Yeah. I bet women created industrialization too to cover their tracks. How dia diabolical. So yeah, everyone could go fuck themselves. <laughs> he stands up and impressing me because I'm fairly sure I couldn't even I couldn't even if I wanted. He yells extremely loudly as if he's lost the concept of volume. I wince and almost want to cover my ears. Arrgh! How nice it would be it would have been if I could have been down there. But no. You see, thinking like that is a trap. You think you're missing out on something, but at the end of the road is nothing but despair. Kenji snatches back the bottle and leans back his head, attempting to pour the alcohol into his mouth, but just ends up drenching himself in it. Damn it! See, my arm is terrible. See, my aim is terrible. And the bad thing about drinking is that it only gets worse the longer you go. Today is the day of despair. His, his voice immediately drops to an almost whisper. As he starts talking much faster than before, slightly slurring his words from the whiskey. As he talks, he waves the bottle around, spilling some in, spilling some of it here and there. Yeah, you know... What was the most shocking event of my life? I have, a, I have a hazy recollection of telling him about the second most shocking event in his life. Which was a bird pooping on his head. <laughs> I remember that. I don't have a particularly great explanation of this, but I nod to at him to continue anyway. You wouldn't think it, but I had a girlfriend here once. I think it was last year. Yeah, I just blew your mind, right? <laughs> I just blew your mind, huh? <laughs> See? I never... I have never told that to anyone. It's true. The thought does blow my mind. Suddenly, I want the bottle. I take it from Kenji and knock back as much as I can. I was the most... I was more innocent back then, and I thought she was sane. Unlike most women. But then one day, we engaged in... Sexual intercourse. It was pretty okay, but the immediately, but then immediately following the event, that is the point of all such things. Something strange and scary happened. He throws himself against the fence, leaning against it. His eyes furrowed. I started feeling incredibly tired and sleepy. That isn't normal, man. What the fuck? I mean, normally. That would be a, a high-tension, adrenaline-pumping moment of anyone's life. But my energy levels were dropping like a brick. Something sinister was in the works. I could feel it. That is when I knew that women are dangerous, sapping the life force of all men through one commodity that is almost solely theirs to control. Sickening. Yeah... You're better off, dude. Kenji is right. This really is a day of despair. I drink more to avoid having to process what you just said. <laughs> now, I am at least... I am the last sane man in an insane world. When other people realize it, there will be a war. A great war between men and the forces of feminism. But the problem is that not all men would fight on my side. Shit sucks. I could set... The bar kind of low. Any men and fine, any men are fine, but not the, but not the dudes raised by their moms or their sister. That's for sure. And nobody into dick girl porn. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what the fuck? This is so stupid. <laughs> this situation seems unlikely to me. Like it wouldn't happen. Like, like it's not very likely to happen. The alcohol must be working. Regardless, I still feel depressed that I'm up here today. I wasn't really looking forward to the festival with the same excitement as the rest of the school, but still. It would have been nice to have gone, gone with someone. From up here, it certainly sounded like everyone's having fun. Maybe I'm missing out. It's just that there was no one I could have gone with. Or maybe there was so many opportunities looking back at it now. And I must have had squandered so many on... Squ squandered? So many of them. God, I suck at reading. Damn, this is true despair. The worst part of it is that's something I, I feel like I have no choices in my life, you know? Like I never have a choice to make a decision. Shit just happens. Like it was all pre-programmed. Like fate or something. Like there is no way I could have a say in what I do. Quick, ask me a question. Uh, now. I can't really... See? This is just another example of it. Damn shit down. Do you see? Now when... I'm trying to go against my destiny and take charge of my life, the opportunity isn't even there. Damn man, you have failed me. Failed me for the last time, jerk. He slides to his knees and then falls over on his side, lying on the gra <laughs> gravel of the roof. Hey, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. Can't you see I'm in despair? He's speaking in a sarcastic tone. <laughs> Suddenly, Kenji sits up, clumsily pats himself clean, and puts his hand out towards me to reach for the bottle. I put it in his hand. What the hell? Damn, you almost... You killed almost the entire bottle. See, it's like I have no options in life. Is this how it's going to be for the rest of the time? Rest of time? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like that for the rest of time. Whatever he's talking about, my head is spinning. I get up and lean against the fence. Hoping it'll help me focus a little. Yeah, I know. We have to fight the power with all we got. It's the only way to live. You know, right guy. This brotherly bond is what keeps me going in these dark times. We should go trolling women. Rolling women? What? Trolling women. Trolling for women. But we have to do it now before I lose this alcohol-related courage. He's gesturing wildly. Madly, even. I take a step backward. He takes a step forward. What's the matter with you? Not in a good mood for love? To be frank, uh, no. I take another step backward. He takes another step forward. He leans in extremely and comfortably close. What the hell? Stop leaning in like that. It bothers me. Leaning in like what? Hey, you shouldn't lean against the fence like that. It's kind of unsafe. I try to move away from Kenji, but my balance isn't so good. Reeling from the dizziness, I grab onto the fence post, but then I feel it give way as soon as I put my weight on it. <laughs> this isn't good. Though my alcohol alley brain doesn't seem to be quite able to, regi to be uh, registering why. Kenji's face seems to be becoming smaller, though, which is a bit of relief. Much smaller, in fact, and rapidly so. There seems to be a bit of wind now. Somehow, it makes me feel almost weightless. I feel dazed, like my mind has gone blank. I am falling? <laughs> I can see the night sky as I turn over in the air. The bottle floats out of my fingertips and disappears into the air as I fall. I realize that this is the fitting end to a truly, truly bad day. And I die. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of Bad Endings for Katsuwa Shoujo. I don't even know what I'm going to call this series. Well, you'll see what I call this series when I post it. So, 
Next time I'll try to find another bad ending. Alright, see you guys later.